Exponential functions are a common class of functions that show up in applications, so let's remind ourselves about the sort of the basics of how they work. So first of all, what is an exponential function? An exponential function is just any function that has this form. So it's some constant, right? A and B are constants. A can't be zero, because otherwise this formula just always gives you zero. And B has to be bigger than one, uh, sorry, B has to be bigger than zero and not equal to one. We want to have B not equal to one, because otherwise this b to the x is always just 1. And we have to have b greater than 0, because otherwise it turns out we run into domain issues when we have this exponential. So with these restrictions, an exponential function is just a function of this form. So it's a times b to the x. So, and remember, it's like this, right? This exponent x is only hitting this b. So the key thing here is that the variable x shows up in the exponent, not in the base. Another way to write exponential functions is like this, a times e to the kx. So k can be any constant except 0 here. Um, the reason why both of these are valid options for exponential functions is because you can always turn one into the other, and we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Um, so the characteristic feature of an exponential function is that um, is that subsequent values of your of an exponential function always have a constant ratio. So, you know, for example, if we take one of these functions, a, b to the x, and we evaluate it at two numbers, say at x and x plus 1. So if we plug in x plus 1, we get a times b to the x plus 1. And then if we take the ratio of these two adjacent values, we get a times b to the x plus 1 over a times b to the x. Well, we can simplify the a's, so they're gone. So b to the x plus 1 over b to the x. But then we can use the law of exponents to write this as b to the x plus 1 minus, sorry, uh, sorry b to the x plus 1 minus x. The minus x is in the exponent here. And this is just b to the first, or b. So you can see um, value for uh, for exponential functions, when you plug in values separated by 1, you always get a constant ratio. So the thing here is this ratio doesn't depend on x. It only depends on the function. This is very similar to how, uh, with a linear function, the difference of adjacent values always turns out to be constant. It turns out for a linear function, the difference of adjacent values is just the slope. So this b, this common ratio b, is sort of the exponential version of the slope, I guess you could say. All right, um, one key thing to know about exponential functions is what their graphs look like. And their graphs come in sort of two flavors. There's uh, the flavor where the base b is bigger than 1. Uh, this corresponds to, if you're using this, uh, this version of exponential functions with uh, e to the kx, uh, b bigger than 1 corresponds to k being positive. Um, and the second flavor of exponential functions is when b is less than 1. And remember, b has to be bigger than 0. So we're talking about b between 0 and 1. Uh, and the corresponding thing for k is that k is, oh, this should say negative. OK. So if b is bigger than 1, that common ratio is bigger than 1. So that means wherever you start out, to get the corresponding point one unit further to the right, you multiply by b. But b is bigger than 1, so that, that's going to make it bigger. And then you multiply by b again and b again, so it's increasing. And if you go backwards, well, the opposite of multiplying by b is dividing by b. So to go backwards, we would divide by b. And b is bigger than 1, so dividing by b makes it smaller. But since b is positive, dividing by b never makes it negative. So it just sort of trails off closer and closer to 0 here. So it looks like this. And this is the exponential growth kind of curve that you've probably seen before. <laughs> Notice that off to the right, it goes up to infinity very quickly, in fact. Off to the left, it gets closer and closer to 0. But it never quite reaches 0. All right, what about the second flavor of exponential functions? What about an exponential function where, the ba where your base is less than 1? Well, again, wherever you start uh, on the y-axis, to move one unit to the right, you multiply, by, uh, you multiply your y-coordinate by b. But b is less than 1, so multiplying by a value less than 1 makes it smaller. So that would be like this. But then you mul to move to the right again, you multiply by b again, and that makes it even smaller, like this. 
And this time, to go to the left, you divide by b, but dividing by something smaller than 1 makes it bigger, so it would give us this. You can see this is exactly the same as the curve before, except it's been flipped horizontally, so this is usually called exponential decay. So it still has a horizontal asymptote at 0, but this time the asymptote is off to the right instead of off to the left. Off to the left, it goes up to infinity. All right, let's look at some examples of using these sort of basics about exponential functions. Uh, so first of all, let's sketch the graph of this function, uh, 1 half e to the 2x plus 1. So maybe to start with, we should look at e to the 2x. Since this k value here is positive, e to the 2x is going to be exponential growth, so like this. Okay. Uh, so multiplying this by a half, is going to, right, that shrinks it vertically, so it's still going to look like exponential growth, but it does, just doesn't grow quite as fast. And then this plus one shifts it up one. So we're going to, you know, instead of a horizontal asymptote at zero, we're going to get a horizontal asymptote at one. So let's draw that. Um, and now, right, now we know the general shape. It's going to look something like this uh, with a horizontal asymptote at one. But to lock down the shape a little bit, let's plot a couple points. So how about 0? If we plug in 0, let's see, we get 1 half e to the 0 plus 1. e to the 0 is 1, so this is 1 half plus 1, that's 3 halves. So right here. And then maybe we can plug in, I don't know, 1. 1 half times e to the or e squared plus 1. and e is a messy number, so I don't know what e squared is off the top of my head. Uh, e is between 2 and 3, so e squared is going to be between 4 and 9, but other than that, I, I don't really know off the top of my head. So let's punch it into a calculator. 7, so e squared is about 7.3, so 1 half times 7.3 plus 1. This gives me 4.695-ish. This is decimal approximation, of course. Any uh, integer power of e is going to be irrational. Uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and a little bit more than half, so about like this. OK. So it's going to look something like this. All right. As a second example, let's find a plausible formula for this function. Now, I say plausible because, you know, having this picture doesn't guarantee that this really is a genuine exponential function, but it definitely looks exponential, right? Um, it looks like some sort of exponential decay. So um, if it's exponential decay, that means it should be e to the kx, where k is just some negative number. Okay, but we don't know what negative number. Um, it looks like right, a, an unshifted exponential will have a horizontal asymptote at 0. This has a horizontal asymptote at minus 3. So it looks like we've taken this, expo this exponential decay and shifted it down 3. Um, other than this, it's a at this point, right, there might be a coefficient here. We would need to pick a k value. So to get a k value, we would need to plug in some points or approximate some points um, and solve some equations to get k. But um, I don't want to do that for this example. What The point of this example is just with a graph, you can immediately know the shift. You can know if it's exponential decay or growth just by looking at the graph. Okay? Um, we, will, we will talk about how exactly to find to fit an exponential to a curve like this, but not quite yet. 